This is a single neuron, single artificial neuron. It receives a number, it outputs another number. Easy. You give a different number, it can give you a different output. Input, output, a mathematical function. So on and so forth. If I put many of these number generators together, I can have many inputs, and I can generate many outputs. And if I layer and structure them after each other and connect them together, it can help us decide about our life crisis. And apart from that, it also helped us in several critical domains in our world. Basically, artificial neural networks has changed the way technology advances. Besides all the advantages, it remains a very, very, um, let's say, complex function that we consider a black box. Because remember all those numbers going into each other? If you look into how an artificial intelligence system comes up with decisions, we will see that, for example, if I show a number, those are actually the activation. This is 2% of activity of the neuron I'm showing here. And you can see. Per decision, there are so many mathematical functions that are actually taking action. So basically, understanding these systems becomes a challenge. We have also another problem with such systems, specifically in safety-critical tasks. Imagine I have an image of an airplane, and I'm asking an AI system to give me what this is. And it's obviously it's going to be like a plane. But if I add noise on top of it, human eye would definitely understand that the picture on the right is also a plane, but the AI system was classifying this with a confidence of 99% as a snail. So there are actually questions, specifically in safety-critical domains, where it is very important life of humans are going to be dependent on an AI system is going to basically um, um, decide about how to do a surgery, how to basically drive a car, or doing medical diagnosis, or actually in, inside a manufacturing kind of company. So there are safety critical issues out there that we have to actually address about AI systems. So let me systematically define what do I mean by interpreting what's happening inside an AI system. Interpretation is the process of giving explanation to human. This is Wikipedia definition. And what that means in terms of artificial intelligence is that I showed you a network of neurons and how can we actually at different levels understand these systems uh, coming with decisions. For example, can I say what is the function of every single node in my system when a decision is made. For example, one of the ways that we, we actually try is to see, um, imagine I'm, uh, the AI system is given a picture of a cat and dog, and it wants to classify it. What I can do, I can see the activity of the network, project the activity back into the image space, and I can see, for example, how uh, where was the attention of the network Okay, on the right side? More specifically here, there is a task called uh, image captioning, basically providing a sentence for an image. Let's uh, pick the top left one. So a woman is throwing a 
So the neural network has to basically decide what's the next word, which is a Frisbee. Now, when we look into where the attention of the network was, we saw that the attention of the network is actually on the Frisbee itself. So that's actually one, one, uh, one nice development. So we are getting there. We are trying to understand how AI systems work. And in many other examples, it's the same thing. But the approach that I like to take is more on the side of how actually an intelligent system comes up with decisions. Okay? What kind of elements do we need? Intelligence is about more than pattern recognition. Artificial, artificial neural networks are very good pattern recognition devices, but intelligence is actually more than that. How can we understand what we see? How can we imagine things? How can we plan actions? And how can we perform reasoning? Building new representation of the world, and in particular, my definition, along with uh, Josh Tenenbaum at MIT, is that we say intelligence is about modeling the world with more precision. What do I mean by that? Like, let's look at the psychological experiment that has been done on infants, less than two years infant, showing like a representation. The guy is trying to put the books inside the, the box. And now, let's see the reaction of the kid. How does this kid comes up with this kind of decision? That, OK, this is an observation of the environment. And then the look, actually, that, hey, dude, I actually solved your problem. And now here is another experiment where, where the guy is basically um, trying to hang some stuff. And then he let one of the uh, devices actually fall. And then the infant just goes and gives it back to the guy. So these are actually fantastic experiments that we have to look into. And we have to see what are the underlying core cognition. How does this kid basically understand these scenarios? So the approach that our group is taking is making that circle I showed you at the beginning a little bit more complex a little bit closer to the representation of a neuron or a cell inside the human brain or animal's brain. So if you see here, it's not only a circle anymore. It has a little bit more components to it. So to show you, for example, very quickly how uh, the activity of this network looks like, in the standard model, on the horizontal axis, you see the speed of activity of a cell. On the vertical axis, you see how the decisions are made while the artificial intelligence system is taking care of the driving. On the right-hand side, you see that we can actually see a little bit of more uh, regions that are explored by the AI system while making a decision, while the standard model is basically just computing a number with a fixed speed. So this is one of the strengths of the model. And then based on those kind of models, we can create circuits that replace the uh, left-hand side circuit. Let's see that circuit in action. We want to do a full autonomous parking of a car on a task where a, a robot is actually searching the environment. And it can avoid obstacles. And it actually, the purpose is to uh, perform a parking trajectory. And the circuit on the top left is taking care of the action. So what we try to do is to basically create a circuit that can perform the parking while we can observe what's happening inside the network. So basically, this is an understandable circuit, fully interpretable that assures the safety of the system. This work basically is a collaboration that we have between multiple institutions. So I work at um, Vienna University of Technology together with MIT and uh, with my colleagues at IST Austria and MIT, uh, we are actually performing this. So I have two PhD supervisors that both are there are Romanian. 
uh, Radu Grusu and Daniela Ross. And um, yeah, so here what I'm showing to you is uh, parking from different distances, the so generalization of how this network comes up with, with an interpretable, basically, architecture. And then, regarding the noise argument, so if I increase the noise for this system or attack this system with some noise, how would this system, if you look at the top two images, you will see that if we have increasing noise, so actually those numbers show the increasing amount of noise on the other side. So on the top left, you see a, a low noise, and on the bottom right, you see the, the highest amount of noise. So the activity of the network is not that much bothered by noise as well. We tested this system for also other tasks, such as imagine a robot that is actually on an upright position. It goes to a place, picks an object, and brings it back to a place, and basically goes to the top center. So in this also case, we tested it, and we can actually say that this system is taking care of the controller in an interpretable fashion. So expand that to actual driving a car inside the streets of Boston. This is a network, a brain, that we can observe its internal state. We can understand how this network comes up with decisions. And at the same time, we can actually reason about why this system is basically coming up with decisions. This is not only an effective way and a step forward towards the development of safe AI systems, but also leaves some hints on how the brain gives rise to mind. Thank you.